So in this video, I'm going to show you how I use this tiny speed light to transform this scene into this. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines, and welcome to the channel. So as I said in my intro, I'm going to show you how I use this speed light during one of my actual weddings and show you how I transform a particular scene into something, or a mundane scene, into something that I consider truly amazing. But before that, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography, or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So before I take you behind the scenes, I'm gonna show you a series of photos and basically explain to you my entire thought process on how I created or how I lit and created that image. Let's talk about this flash first. Basically, this is a standard speed light. This is the Sony F60RM. The thing that I like about this speed light, as you will see later, it is very easy and very small for you to position in situations in which you might have a hard time putting in a bigger light. And I also modified it using this one. This is the MagMod MagSphere. Now, the camera that I used for that particular shoot was my Sony A7R Mark III, and the lens was a 16 to 35 f4 lens, okay? So I shot this image right before the bride entered the church, and the moment that I saw the scene and the car, the church and the facade actually, I knew immediately that's where I wanted to shoot a couple portraits, and I was hoping that the light would be somewhat similar, but I personally really didn't keep my hopes up because I knew more or less by after an hour the sun would be gone, but then it would still be a very good um, composition, plus the old car and the old church facade would actually make a good photograph, okay? So having this already in mind, what I did was the moment that we got out of the church, you can see that the light was already totally different. I lost the contrast here already, but that's okay. It still gave us really nice light. I'd rather have light like this than a gloomy sky. As you can see, the sky was still blue. So, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. And the most important thing is to just take advantage of the things that you actually have at that particular moment. So initially I had my flash in here and my only issue with having my flash somewhat somewhat here, it just did give me the effect that I wanted because it was too close to them. In other words, I would have gotten too much contrast because of the inverse square law. So I did some initial tests here and I knew that I could light up the entire the, inside the car with just this Magmod Magspear and I was good. So I just proceeded to position my flash somewhere else. So instead of having my flash really close to the subject, I decided to actually bring it back towards the front of the car and bounce it off the ceiling a little. So it was facing more towards the ceiling so that it bounces back and at the same time, this light here would actually spill on their faces. So the moment that I had my light dialed in, well, actually the moment I had my light position in, it was time for me to actually wait for the couple because they were being shot by my assistant photographer at that time. So that's one technique. Basically, if you have another photographer with you, it's best that you tell them you tell them to bring the couple towards or to bring the couple somewhere for them to, to shoot so that we don't waste any time. And while they are shooting, I am here tweaking the lights for the next layout. So the first thing that I did was I made a couple go in and I figured out their pose. So basically, I wanted them to have like a kissing shot inside a car just to say, hey, congratulations, it's done, we're married, we're off to our honeymoon or something like that. I just wanted them to celebrate everything with a kiss in the same way. Every time we end the wedding, we always have our kiss shot at the very end, right? So I just wanted to put that in the car. So initially, with this one, I had my camera set. Actually, my camera was set on shutter speed priority. In other words, I put it within my flash sync speed, which was 1 over 250. Then immediately, the camera set its lowest aperture possible, which at that time was an f4 because I had an f4 lens. And the camera was just the one doing the ISO computation. In other words, I had everything on auto ISO and I was controlling my exposure using the exposure compensation dial on top of the Sony camera, okay? So I had it initially this way, 
and I felt that the clouds were overexposed a little and I didn't want this type of color here so I wanted to underexpose it a little so again as I said earlier I just touched my I just dialed in my exposure using my exposure compensation dial and basically it brought down my ISO to ISO 16C which you could see brought out more of the blue sky and gave a little bit more texture here in the church and I did an initial shot with my flash on and you can see here that my flash was too powerful. So if your flash is too powerful and if you already dialed in your existing ambient light, the control for proper exposure would then be your flash power, which is basically what I did next. I think in this particular moment, I had my flash at full power. So I dialed it back now and look at my ISO, my ISO now shifted to 1 over 125 which in turn gave me more character here in the church and brought out more of the blue sky and as you can see my flash now was properly dialed in you could see the softness of the flash because it was bounced off the ceiling like here it was bounced off the ceiling before it hits them therefore making the light a lot bigger and we still had this light filling in from the front which gave us this nice soft light. This is the final image straight out of camera. In other words, absolutely no editing has been done to this particular image yet. And here is the final image. This final processed image, basically what I just did, was that I brought back a little bit of the details here in the shadow because I knew that my camera could easily bring out the details in the shadow. So that's what I decided to do here. Brought out some vibrance here in the sky Basically, you know what? The entire editing process here was just merely adjusting my white balance, my shadows, my highlights, and my exposure and brightness. And look at this one. I'll go through it fast. You could see the pin cushion effect. So that's another tip. Make sure also that you fix your lens distortion. In other words, each lens will actually have a distortion that's built into the lens. And the nice thing about having a camera that's compatible with the lens is that the camera knows exactly what distortion the lens has and can compensate for that. And that's basically what happened here. Well, the software did it for me. But you could always turn it on in your JPEG settings. In this case, I don't think I was able to turn it on. But you could always turn it on in your JPEG settings to correct for, for to do lens compensation so that all these distortions will already be removed in your JPEG images. Okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And as you can see, this particular light, one tiny speed light, is enough to really transform a are otherwise really mundane scene into something very vibrant and very nice to look at and if you want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or even in more detail i do hold one-on-one -on -one online workshops the details of which i will put in the description below and don't forget to like this video and at the same time subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell and if you want to see more of my images you can always find me on instagram it's at jiggy alejandrino okay till the next video